Straw has been used for building for thousands of years and it's very durable when it's looked after. But straw as we know it today, used for straw bale buildings, that process was invented in the 1850s because baling machines were invented. So the white settlers on the plains of Nebraska had nothing to build their houses with, but they did have these giant building blocks, which for them were a waste product or something to be stored for the animals. And over that first winter, they built them into temporary homes because they didn't have anything else to build with. And what they found was that those blocks kept them really cosy that first winter. And then in the summer, they kept them nice and cool. And that was what the, the, that was the birth of insulation, although they didn't call it insulation at that time, a barrier that prevented the passage of heat and cold. And that's what straw bales do really well. And since that time, because those houses performed really well, they made them into, te into permanent homes instead of just temporary ones. And there are actually quite a number of houses of that age still surviving in the States. And you can go and see them and people still live in them. So that, that it was the beginning of the modern use of straw for building with. It carried on until about the 1940s, till the, the, the Second World War, and then it went into decline and was rediscovered in the States by people who were starting to think about environmental issues and looking for ways of building using natural materials. And they found in the States the, some of these old houses, they had no idea that they were made of straw until they took the plaster off. There was a house like that that was built near Paris in 1921 and it was discovered fairly recently and you would have not known that it was made of straw until you started working your way through the wall to put a new window in. So what that tells us about straw is that in the right conditions it's extremely durable. The Egyptians built with straw and we still have some of it. So in the right conditions which are not too much moisture and um, keeping it protected from the elements, straw can last indefinitely. So it's not beyond the realms to think that we could build straw bale houses that will still be around in three or four hundred years time. Because it's a natural material, it will stay there where we put it. And when the building comes to the end of its life or we want to move on, do something else with the plot, we can simply take it apart and it can go back to nature without causing uh, um, any toxic waste. And that's, that's part of the reason why we're looking to find natural materials to build with instead of unnatural and, and highly processed ones. So the straw that we use comes from the field. It's, it's literally that giant block that you see about this long about this wide and this tall that, that we find on the fields and is often used for horse stables and liveries for bedding for animals. When we get it for building with, we want it much more dense than that. So we have, we have a lot of straw packed into the same size and we then use it for building houses with. People are starting to think more about using natural materials for various different reasons. One of them is about protecting the environment. So if we can use materials that have low embodied energy, then that's going to mean we have to use less fuel that's generated from a power station, from fossil fuels, from nuclear power in order to produce it. And straw is extremely low in embodied energy, really, the only energy that's, that's required to make that bale of straw is the diesel for the tractor to farm it and harvest it and to transport it to where you're going to be building with. That sort of thinking is behind the use of all other natural materials as well. So sheep's wool, for instance, which is an abundant resource, can be made into a form which, where it, whereby it can be used in quilt form as insulation in floors and ceilings and it's not toxic and it performs very well in the wet. For instance, it, it's, it works better as an insulating material when it's damp than it does 
when it's dry, which you can't say for other insulating materials. And again, it's quite low in embodied energy. Another reason why someone might choose to use straw is because of the cost. If you, if you buy a whole load of bales and have them delivered to your site, they could cost about £3.50 per bale delivered. And if you think that the average three bedroomed house needs about 350 bales, you can see that the cost, the material cost of that wall is actually very low. And compared with the cost of building in brick and block, you could save about £10,000 just on the materials. You may then invite your friends and your families to join a course and to learn how to build with the straw yourself so that you can keep the labour costs down and that way you can see that for the wall element of the building you can reduce the costs quite dramatically if you have a dynamic impact on that yourself. One of the other aspects of building with straw is that you can make really beautiful buildings quite easily. It's very, very easy to make curves in straw and to make circular buildings or semicircles with square ends. And although the carpentry associated with that is a little more complex, it does actually give you a, a much greater scope for designing a very organically shaped house and some of the early buildings in the UK have been extremely organic because you can and so self-builders have realised the potential of this design aspect of straw and have really used their imaginations to create very very beautiful buildings. A lot of straw bale buildings have a self-build element to them even the commercially built ones. The council houses that were built for North Kesteven, they had courses to, to build the straw and to do clay and lime plastering on those buildings. And it's a tremendous part of construction that we don't talk about enough, which is that we ought to be enjoying what we're doing and we should be able to participate in it as a community and to bring back what we've lost by this commercial world to be able to get our hands mucky again and to, and to be able to create the buildings that we inhabit. It is actually very simple to build with straw as long as you follow some basic design principles. And the beauty of a good building is that it is simple and straightforward. It shouldn't be complicated as long as you follow first principles and work your way through step by step to end up with a finished building. And that's what we're going to show you in this video. So anybody can build with straw. It simply requires taking time, learning what you're doing and why you're doing it, and putting some focus into that, gathering your friends around you and having a go. For more complex buildings that require really good energy efficiency and a high standard of finish, then you would probably need um, somebody who has got quite a bit of experience to guide you with the detailed aspects, certainly for the design part to get it through planning and building regs, and then to help you on site to do the bits that you may not have done before, um, and certainly that a, a building com company might not have done before, just to guide them through those aspects to make sure that they get them right. But, the whole design and the whole approach to building with straw is about simplicity. And if we keep it simple, then pretty much anybody can follow the process and can end up participating in building something that really makes you happy.